Welcome to Tomorrow Daily, the best geek talk show in the universe. I'm Ashley Skeva. You're watching one of our short episodes. Because of the Thanksgiving holiday here in the States, we'll not be having an episode tomorrow, unfortunately. But you'll be stuffing your face with turkey if you live here, so that's fine. Also, we don't have an episode on Monday the 30th, so you can check us out the 1st, the 2nd, and the 3rd next week. We will have a long show for you, and we can't wait to tell you who the guest is. But until then, let's hit the headlines. <laughs> Get ready, biohackers, because tech tattoos are just around the corner. Chaotic Moon is a mobile dev company with an idea they're calling Tech Tats. Tech Tats are actually biosensors that rest on top of your skin as opposed to being injected underneath them like real tattoos. Uh, and a small microcontroller handles incoming data and storing information. Electroconductive paint allows for temperature sensing, while an ambient light sensor flips on an LED if it realizes it's dark out, making you kind of feel like a really awesome cyborg. A Bluetooth low energy connection means transferring health data to an app is easy, and since it can be placed anywhere instead of just on your wrist, Chaotic Moon believes it might have a place in tracking for medical, athletic, and other applications where a visible monitor might not be an option, or if the wearer wants to be more discreet. They also mentioned the possibility of Bio NFC, which would turn one of these temporary tattoos into a payment portal that you could activate by gesture. If this all sounds kind of fun, I've got good news for you. Chaotic Moon hopes to make the final product inexpensive enough to sell in packs like Band-Aids or other small first aid items. Would you wear one of these things out? I mean, on the one hand, I am getting old, but not old enough to want to know everything about what's going on in my body at all times. But on the other hand, I feel like it would be a really, really cool icebreaker at parties. Okay, so our second story is about NASA building a robot that's going to help with space exploration. This robot is called the Valkyrie robot, or the Robonaut 5. Uh, we've actually seen it before. This video that you're watching is from 2013, but NASA is making a really interesting move towards getting the most out of what it can do. They've chosen two university teams to make the robot as autonomous and dexterous as possible. MIT and Northeastern University are the two schools pitting their R5 robots against one another, and they will show off their final designs in NASA's Space Robotics Challenge next year. The Robonaut 5 is already a pretty impressive robot. It's six feet tall, it weighs 290 pounds, and it has an array of sensors, sonar, remote sensing tech, and other features on board. So the teams will primarily focus on improving the software for the robot. When the 2013 video was released, then project lead Nicholas Radford said, quote, these robots will start preparing the way for the human explorers, and when the humans arrive, the robots and humans will work together in a tight relationship, unquote. Yeah, until those researchers from yesterday's story show up and start teaching Robonaut 5 to say no to astronauts, and then we end up with a HAL 9000 situation. I'm just saying. Uh, if you're still thinking about the Tech Tat story from earlier, and you don't really want to wear a biosensor, how about ingesting one? That's what MIT is thinking you might want to do in the future. They are again in the news with a sensor that a person would have to swallow to make it work. Oddly enough, the main feature on this particular device is a microphone. Why a microphone? Well, all the better to hear your heart and lungs functioning from within your GI tract, scientists say. The microphone will pick up the sound of your heart beating and your lungs working, giving two pieces of info from a single sensor. It's embedded into a silicone capsule that people can easily swallow, and then once it's been ingested, a nearby receiver picks up the signals and passes on the data. So what's the benefit here? Well, researchers think this pill could be used to help patients with chronic illnesses, monitor soldiers out in the field, improve athletic training, diagnose heart conditions, and more. Unfortunately, if you really think about it, this pill will only last for about a day or two before you have to start the process all over again. So one or two days of monitoring. All right, it's time for Mod Squad. Let's go from cool sci-fi to, aw, you tried. <laughs> Japanese comedy website Omokoro thinks it has a really good solution if you find using a selfie stick to be really embarrassing. User Monsoon is one such person, and this is his creation, ultra long fake arms for selfies. It's a pretty straightforward construction. He just camouflaged a couple of selfie sticks inside some plastic hands, you know, as one does, and then added some more sleeve room to a shirt to help hide his new weirdo selfie stick arms. The end result looks supernatural, except not at all. And honestly, I think it could have been made better if they were retractable arms so that you could go out and pretend that you were a real-life Mr. Fantastic or an Inspector Gadget. Pick your generation. All right, guys, let's look at your photos. 
Our phone tagger for the day today is Kayvon, who snapped this on his HTC One XL, and he writes to us and says, Hi, my name is Kayvon. Big fan of the show. Great and fresh news. Really liking it. Keep up the good work. These are a few photos I took with my beloved HTC One XL, which I lost later from visiting Hormoz Island in Persian Gulf. Beautiful place. I was stunned and in one word, colorful. The whole island is made of these colorful soils, red, yellow, green, and the sun and a lot of light. And of course, the beautiful sea and also some sci-fi shaped rocks. The photos are untouched and I would be more than happy to give you permission to use them if you find them worthy of your amazing show. Kayvon, yes, 100% these are worthy, and I agree, those look like really weird sci-fi rocks. I'd like to have them as the backdrop for this set. Unfortunately, it'd be really expensive to ship them. If you guys want to send in your photography to be potentially featured on the show, please do email us. We're tomorrow at CNET.com. Send us your photo. Tell us you. Give us permission to use it because we need that. And then also tell us a little story about it because we like stories. If you want to find us online, you want to share the show with a friend, Take them over to TomorrowDaily.com. It's that easy. Give the gift of Tomorrow Daily this holiday season. And I'm not going to stop saying that until the holidays are over. Uh, and also, you can find us online on Twitter. Personally, I'm at Ashley Esqueda. Producer Logan is over at Logan Moy. And Jeff is at Jeff Canada with two N's and one T. We're going to be back next week on Tuesday with a brand new docket of weird science fact and science fiction. All of our friends celebrating Thanksgiving in the U.S. Have a great turkey day and be good humans. We'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, my God.